this is my Pentax Auto 110. Got my 50 millimeter f2.8 on there, which as you know, if you watch my previous video on this, which I will put right there or somewhere on the screen and in the description down below. Focal lengths on this lens and on any of the lenses that you put on this are going to be about double. So where this says 50, this will actually more so match something that you'd see out of a 100 millimeter lens in a normal 35 millimeter. I have here also my 18 millimeter, which is, you know, like a 36, 40 millimeter lens. But we're not talking about this at the moment because this is roll review. I think this is number four, no technically number four, but I think this is the third edition of Roll Review that I've shot, and we are going to be covering, it's actually cartridge, and this is the Western Family 110 cartridge, it has 24 exposures in it, it's roughly a 200 ASA, and I'm covering this because there's a dude on eBay who's selling like packs of five of these, and I picked one up, um, I picked five up, I should say, because as it stands, shooting 110 is not a very cheap venture. The film is typically more expensive, and then also there's higher processing fees because you have to deal with the cartridge, and because it's so much smaller, it needs specialized spools to develop it, and all sorts of stuff. Like, it's just kind of a challenge. So, shooting this bad boy, which I love doing, is very expensive and the quality is like, you know, not always there. So we're gonna go through a couple of the pictures that I took, and by no means are these good pictures, but I think that there's enough in here to give you a good idea of the functionality of this camera and then also the latitude of this film because I recommend buying this. If you have something that shoots 110 and you're looking for a way to spend 40 bucks or something like that, go for this, please, because this is great. I will try and link that down below. I don't know how many they have that they're selling, but if you get a chance, do buy some. So we're gonna start out. This one is just a cracked windshield. This is my friend was taking me to get a burrito. And on the way back, took a picture of her cracked windshield. And I'm picking this picture because it was a blue sky, partly cloudy as you can see. But you can also see there's quite a bit of, uh, there's some warm tones here towards the base of the picture. Other than that though, color retention seems to be pretty good. It's very low contrast, which is to be expected with expired film. I think these expired in process before November of 2000. So, you know, it's 21 years past expiration and it's pretty good. You can definitely see there's a lot of grain here in this next one. This was at a lake and across the way you can see an apartment complex, but really in the sky here, you can definitely tell there's a lot of grain and it just kind of has a really gritty look to it, which is personally, I think a good look. I enjoy that kind of like textured look and you really get that out of 110 just because of how much smaller it is. And then here is just a shot of a windshield with rain on it. And we don't get a lot of rain here in Arizona, so I was very excited. And then also, I, I took this one because I wanted to see how sharp the focus would be, not only in the lens, I think this was with the 50 millimeter lens, but I also just wanted to see how sharp the image would be. Uh, going through, we have this one here, and this was a sunset and the roof, and the colors of this were really nice. I think I might have taken a picture on my phone. If I did, I will put that side by side so you can compare and contrast. But you can see here in the shadows of this roof, very grainy. It looks like someone was shooting on like a one of those Rebel T3Is, and they, they bumped the ISO all the way up that they could to shoot this night scene. And this was handheld too, so I'm very impressed with that because if we go on, here's a picture of a dog. This is B, my parents' dog, and he was moving and the light was dim. You have no control over anything in here. And the lens is a fixed aperture at 2.8, which is 5.6. 
shooting at 200. And this was taken probably like late afternoon, early evening indoors. There's no windows, it was like one light. So the lighting conditions were really bad and you can see that handheld and it just looks bad, like it's unusable. So that's something to be wary of. Uh, here is the burrito spot in question. And I like this one a lot because you really get to see just these nice blues up here. And then also it totally cuts off the shadows right here. So I think that the automatic light metering system in here heavily prioritizes the majority of the image. And it basically looks at all of this, the majority of this, and calculates that that is going to be what we expose for and not the shadow bit. So I really dig that and I think it did a great job. Here's another sunset photo of sorts. And again, it's calculating here that the majority of the sky is very bright. And then the street here and all these trees are very dark. So it basically picks the faster of the speeds, capture as much detail out of the sky as possible. And that way it's not going to have like a slower shutter speed. And then it's not going to have that blurry look like the dog picture does. I think of all the pictures I took, this one's probably my favorite. This was just out of a rear view mirror. You can just see the sunset behind me because I was driving east at the time and you can see just some car and I thought it looked pretty cool. Here we have a cup of coffee that I had at a restaurant. And again, this one's kind of interesting because there's a little bit of motion blur. So leads me to believe that there was a bit of a slower shutter speed to try and capture this. But still at the same time, I do really enjoy the look of this. I think the colors are very accurate here. You can still see a lot of grain there as well, but that's to be expected. Here's a picture of my friend at that same restaurant. And again, we're sitting under like a, a warmer light, like a tungsten base light probably. The exposure I'd say is pretty perfect and there's not much grain here on her face as there is on the wall behind her. I just think that's by virtue of the way that the light is. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. I didn't really get too many shots out of this roll out of, well these are two different cartridges because again these are 24 exposures. Uh, I don't believe they ever made a 36 exposure 110 cartridge. Yeah, I didn't really get many shots that I was like super fond of. There was just a handful and even the ones that I'm demonstrating to you now. Definitely not something I'm gonna hang my hat on, but I did think it was an interesting experiment and I was very, very pleased with the results of the film itself, not the pictures. And yeah, I, I just wanna put it out there that I think 110 film is something that you should explore. It is a little pricey, so be wary of that. But that's why this, this Western family is such a good deal. And I encourage you to experiment with it. I think that it, there's a lot of fun to be had. And it's kind of, you know, one of those things that not many people are going after. Definitely look into that if you are inclined. Check this out. It is approved by yours truly. I will say that like the results I got may not be the exact same results you get. That's just by virtue of, you know, expired film being such a crapshoot. But I'd say go for it. I, you know, it's it's a it's a gamble, but when you do nail it, it's so much more rewarding, I think. So, that is all for today. Uh, I've got some more videos in the works. I just kind of a lot to edit at the moment, but we're working through it. If you have any questions, make sure you comment down below. Shoot me an email if you're needing any specific help on any repairs. And until then, catch you on the next one.